You may remember that Bachman's helped me to plant a new vegetable garden last year. Look how, and look at all the work I was doing. Uh, by helped, I mean you pretty much did it. And now is the time that many people, including myself, because I don't know what happened this year. This whole team of people has not shown up to my house. So apparently I have to plant my own garden this year. So Adam Bachman from Bachman's is here, not at Jason's place, but you know, you are bringing in the, the knowledge to share with everyone else too. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Growing your own vegetables is, is fun, it's educational, and it's also responsible. I know it's uh, harvesting the vegetables is one of my oldest daughter's favorite things to do. So um, the determining factor for what type of vegetables you can grow should be sunlight. Um, there are sort of three degrees. If you, if you can uh, achieve a minimum of four hours of sunlight, that's good for leafy vegetables like um, lettuce, spinach, and um, Swiss chard, and those types of things. Minimum of six hours of sunlight. Great for herbs as well as root vegetables like carrots and radishes. And a lot of times the side of your house can be a good place for those kind of things because you do get sunlight, but not maybe enough for the tomato type. That's plant. right. For, for tomatoes and, and some of the more popular vegetables, you need a minimum of eight hours of sunlight. So things like mm -hmm. eggplant, tomatoes, peppers. Um, so use that as your determining factor. That southern exposure is what you're looking southern for. Southern exposure there. is what yeah. you're looking for, absolutely. So um, determine how much sunlight you have, and then that will determine which uh, vegetables will uh, or fruits will be successful for you. Is that just something you would watch for? You kind of say, like, okay, I love this spot and then you can keep an eye on it for a couple of yeah, days. Yeah, if you've been in your home or yeah. apartment or condo for a while, you know um, where, the, where the bright sure. spots are. So that's where you would want to investigate. Um, you can also buy light sensors and things to give, get more definitive information. What are, what are these things, these grow bags? So more and more people are wanting to grow edibles, but they don't have a huge space. So sure. um, there are these grow bags, raised garden beds, which I believe you have in your yard now, which and I are love great. it. The raised bed, it kind of limits the space. It also gets you to calm yourself down. Mm -hmm. Yes. The first time you do a garden, I think you're like, all right, I'm going to plant all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. when harvest time comes, you're like, what am I going to do with all this <laughs> yeah. stuff? You're that neighbor that's handing out right, vegetables right. to everybody. Yeah. So there are lots of great small space options. Options. These grow bags, um, herb and strawberry pots. Oh, these are beautiful. Um, they, they are very nice. So if you have, if you don't have yard space, but you have a sunny deck or balcony, um, this maybe is a good option for you. And then finally, fertilizing and feeding uh, is something that's crucial for strong vegetables. So there are great organics out there now, which I would recommend if you are growing edibles. Um, and be sure to, to uh, follow the label instructions. Some of them you feed twice a month. Some of them you feed um, every two months. I know we do have a frost potentially tomorrow yes. morning. Any ad quick advice? That's a great reminder. Our average last frost isn't until May 10th, okay. um, so it is still very early. Good. Okay. Yeah. All right. But this kind of thing for herbs, you can probably go ahead and get going. I would that. still bring it still inside at night. Bring it in at night. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Very good. Thanks, Anna.